Let me tell you a devastating story about a sea lion named Angie who didn't have a chance. Well, wouldn't have had a chance if it wasn't for the Marine Mammal Center. Angie was found with a terrible gash on her rear flipper. The Marine Mammal Center volunteers, who were some amazing people, they found Angie and they took her to the Marine Mammal Center and they did surgery on her flipper. The surgery removed two of Angie's digits. Imagine waking up without a thumb or index finger, but Angie was still going to die. They made the risky decision to amputate the entire flipper. This is a happy story. The surgery worked and Angie, with only one flipper, was released back into the ocean where you might see her today. When I heard that story, it tugged at my heart. Who wouldn't fall in love with a sea lion? I learned more about the rescue center, the vets and the volunteers, and I learned that they needed money. As cute as they are, sea lions can't pay for their hospital stay. So I wrote a book. This is important. I am going to come back to this. Not only did the story of Angie's tail move my hands, or move my heart, it moved my hands and my time and my creativity. I wrote a book, Angie's Tale, and published it through Lulu.com. It was a lot of work and I got a lot of help. I even got a lot of publicity with the local paper doing a whole article on me. Each book raises money for the Marine Mammal Center. Do you want to know what I learned? Books don't raise a lot of money. First, each book is about $10 and makes only 76 cents for the center. I have sold over 100 books online and at book signings. Secondly, each, each book is about $10 and only makes 76 cents for the center. I have sold about 100 books. Thank you to the people who came, who came to the book signings and bought the book or who went online and bought the book. But even with all the publicity, I have only sold about 100 books. Once again, not only did the story of Angie's Tale move my heart, it moved my hands and my time and my creativity. I created a web page, jaileyduncan.weebly.com. And I researched different types of ways that people who were moved by Angie's story could donate directly to the Marine Mammal Center or buy the book. I did my research on something called a donate button. I went with the donate button that would give the most money to the Marine Mammal Center and I put a donate button on my web page. But I realize as much as the story of Angie's tale inspired me to give just a moment to give more than just a moment where my heart was touched, it is very hard to ask others to do the same. I started with you by saying, let me tell you a devastating story and I really appreciate what you have already given me. You have listened. You are still here. Or for those of you watching on you haven't left the theater. Or for those of you watching online, you haven't moved on to the next video. But how do I get you from passively listening to the story of Angie's tale and the Marine Mammal Center to actively doing something like buying a book or pressing a donate button? In the first case, you're giving up your time. In the second case, you're giving up your time and your money. And we all have a limited supply of both. I worry that if I ask you to buy my book or donate money, you won't buy my classmates' books. Ava, Britt, and Quincy wrote a book titled Don't Smoke that raises money for the Lung Cancer Alliance. My dad is undergoing chemotherapy right now because he's been diagnosed with lung cancer. I don't want to take money away from that charity and the many others that are working to save lives. But Angie's story is not the only one I want to tell. Let me tell you just one more story. It is the story of Laverne. She was a baby sea lion, a pup, found malnourished with pneumonia and nearly blind. She was one of the hundreds of malnourished and dehydrated sea lion pups that have been stranded along the Northern California coast. Once again, the Marine Mammal Center came to the rescue. They, fe they fed Laverne and they helped her recover and they did some surgery on the cataracts in her eyes. And like Angie, she, is she was released back into the Pacific Ocean where and possibly having pups of her own. Hopefully, Angie and Laverne's pups won't be a part of the hundreds of malnourished sea lion pups. These pups are the frontline victims of ocean pollution and global warming. The study and treatment of these pups reminds us how interconnected we are. They, they remind us that the oceans are becoming more difficult to live in, and when we rescue and treat them, we learn new ways to rescue ourselves, too. I hope you've let Angie's story Angie's tale and Laverne's story to tug at your heart. But I hope for more than that. To feel your heart be moved is wonderful. It is sympathetic. But what does it 
take to follow through and take out your cash, your credit card, or your checkbook? How does a story turn sympathy into compassion where you choose to donate time, creativity, or wealth to a worthy cause? I'll stop here and invite you to tell me a story of your generosity and compassion.